again ruling on grow and beard. Brothers love the beard. Uh, it's a long discussion. Look, let's just try to summarize. It, it is the most, it's the easiest act of worship in Islam. If you think about it, when you do salah, you have to clean yourself from the jasa. Then you have to make wudu. Then you have to go to the masjid. Then you have to say takbirat. You have to memorize the fatiha. Subhan Rabbi al Azim. Subhan Rabbi al So many things you have to do in order for you to what? <coughs> to worship Allah. The beard is none of the above. You don't have to do anything. Just go like this. <laughs> and it will come. The easiest act of worship ever. Subhanallah. But somehow, yeah, there's some issues about it. There's no doubt among the scholars that are considered to be scholars, like Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahimullah, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad, Imam Shafi'i, that it's a wajib, the same way you have to pray five times a day, you must let your beard grow. These scholars have agreed that it is wajib on the Muslim male to leave it alone. Furthermore, it can constitutes at least eight to nine different violations. I will quickly, quickly mention them. If you don't have a beard, then the discussion tonight was what? Tawbah. So you have tawbah to Allah. Don't feel bad. I'm a sinner too, regarding something that you don't know about. And I will do tawbah. Just because yours is outwardly, doesn't mean that we are, you are, be we are better than you. We may have a worse sin inside that you don't know. So don't let the shaitan play games with you. Say, oh, he's speaking against me. I don't have a beard. Even if you're, you don't have a beard, barakallah. Next time we see you, inshallah, you will have a beard. But anywho, the violations are as follows. Disobeying Allah. Because Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam seen two men who had a mustache and no beard. And they were convoys from the king of Persia. He disliked looking at them. He told them, who told you to do this to yourself? They said, our Lord, Kisra. He said, well, my Lord commanded me to let my beard grow and to trim my mustache. So when Allah commanded him, meaning when we shave or cut the beard or whatever other design available today is, then we are disobeying Allah. Disobeying the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu second violation. He said, leave your beards alone. Leave them alone. This is from the fitrah. Thirdly, imitating women. Women have a facial character, uh, the face is in a certain way, unlike the men. So we don't, you know, we don't, we don't go there. And they don't come to us and they don't let their beard grow, alhamdulillah, even if they did, it's not going to come. And, and on the other hand, we don't imitate them. Fourthly, imitating the disbelievers. It's the quality of the disbelievers. And, and we are, as Prophet said, Man tashabbahi bi fa omin Whomever resembles a group of people, he's one of them. And we do not want to be among them. Uh, fifthly, uh, it constitutes changing the creation of Allah. Because Allah created with the natural, uh, natural hair growing on the beard. Even if it's one hair, that's your obligation. Some people are not as hairy as others. It's not about how much hair you have. It's about the fact that you leave it alone. Whatever grows, this is from Allah Jalla Jalalu. It's none of our business. Uh, seventhly, uh, it's a waste of money. You know, we said before, you know, those, how, how much is the Gillette? Go to Danu. Look at Gillette. Now it comes with a battery. <laughs> Allah, I was looking at it like, what is this man? The next thing you know, they're going to invent a machine that you put around your waist and it will do the shaving for you. And you just look in the mirror. Uh, anywho, you know, these things are expensive. They're really expensive. And uh, you know, you, you, you're sitting there wasting time, wasting effort and disobeying Allah willingly. Uh, so that's a problem. Eighthly, it's jahar uh, bil-masiyah. It's a sin that is done outwardly. Yeah, and you're, you're, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, all of my ummah will be pardoned, will be okay, except those who didn't s do sin outside. Yeah, and not, you know, they don't conceal them. And it, it falls under that. And then lastly, uh, it's uh, actually this is it. Uh, that's enough, really. I shouldn't really, there's more, there's a couple more that I do not recall right now. But I think that is enough for us to understand that we should just leave it alone. Again, it's so easy that all we have to do is leave it alone. If the people are going to call you mutawwi' and you're going to go to Jannah, let it be. If the people are going to make fun of you, then Allah told us at the end of Surah al mutaffifin that on the Day of Judgment, it will be the other way around. It will be the other way around. You will make fun of them. You will go to Jannah, they will be in Jahannam and you will see them in Jahannam. Yes, you, through the beard you go to Jannah, yes. Because you are obeying Allah. It's not about the hair. It's about the ta'a, the easiest ta'a that Allah has given us and we're still not carrying it out. Brothers and sisters, brothers in Islam, we must change our ways.
These violations. These are by this violation. We must leave it alone already. It's so easy. You will love it. You don't have to worry about it anymore. How many times you cut yourself and you go, you know, you was you are late to work every day trying to clean your beard. You leave it alone. Buy a nice comb. You have some, you know, different creams and what have you. Make it look nice and dandy. And you know, you live your life, inshallah, happily ever after. Like that. Abu Matab. Dabwat. Dot com.